hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Bless his name. I thank you, Father God, for waking me up this morning in my right mind, my health, and my strength. I thank you, Father God, that I get to see a new day, a, a, a new mercy, and I'm just so excited because it's all about you, Father. Even though things are going on in my life, I just curse it to the root. I cast it back on Jesus because he already took care of it 2,000 years ago. And so, Father, 2,000 years ago, I'm going to let you keep it. I'm going to let you keep everything you took on your body to, to, to bless this world, to bless me and my family. Father God, all those who are listening, we all together come together and just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the highest praise is hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we say hallelujah to you because we know without you, Father God, we can do nothing. But you said in your word that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. So I'm depending on you. Anybody that's listening, I am Donna Jones. And this is Be You Say Bye to any, I said anything. Do y'all understand anything? Anything that's hindering you, say bye to it. If it's making you uh, fretful, if it's making you nervous, if it's making you cry, curse it to the rut. Kick it to the curb. That's all I'm saying. Get rid of it. Because we are here to, to worship and praise God. We give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. I give him the praise because my grandkids are moving about and running around. Even though through this uh, pandemic, we, we, we just want to say, hey, I trust God and I'm going to do all that they tell us to do. I'm going to wear my mask because I'm cute with my mask. So I don't know what y'all talking about. And then keep my hands washed and we keep it moving. We Even you can go and get the shield, put it over your head. Put it, and put it over your face and then put a mask under that. So many things God has given us avenues to. So many things that we don't want to do, but it keeps your family together. It keeps all of us together that I can see you tomorrow. I can see you today. I can worship and say, Lord, thank you that my neighbor woke up this morning and came out, emptied her garbage fed the birds. Father God, it's just so much going on. But I know that you are still in charge, Father. And I know, hallelujah, that as long as we do what is right, we are a-okay. Amen, Father. And I'm thanking you, Father God, for just blessing me uh, to see another day. I am uh, going to come to you. Um, and I had this 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 um this little story, and it's uh your mountain needs to hear your voice, and I'm I'm basically you know I got my little notes here and everything, um uh, and it's probably going to sound like I'm reading because I am reading, and uh, I'm just I read this little story and I thought it was really really neat uh, that uh. And this is something that you need to know. You, your, your mountains, whatever you're going through is a mountain, especially if you're falling all out and acting a fool. You, 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 you got a mountain and you don't know how to handle that mountain. And so instead of uh, boo-hooing and crying and falling all on the floor and, and beating the kids up and cussing the kids out and all that, yuck, 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 uh, we need for those mountains uh, to hear our voice. I don't care what kind of mountain you got. A mountain is a mountain. Mark eleven twenty two 22 says, speak. Oh God, that felt so good. Speak to your mountains. Mark 11, um, 22 says, have faith in God. And I do. I have faith in him. I believe in him. I believe in myself too. Because if I don't believe in, 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 and um, believe myself. And when I'm saying something, then 
it comes non avoid. It's, it, I, it, it don't work. But I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And so your mountain needs to hear your voice. Get in that book of Mark 11. Um, read the whole book. I mean, because I love that, uh, that book, that chapter of Mark. And, 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 and as you read it, go down a little further and you'll find out that it says, say, say, say three times. It says, say, say, say. So you got to say something you got for the word to work. As I always tell everybody, there's no such thing as a silent prayer. You got to say it where your ear hears and faith come by hearing. Faith come by hearing. So say something good. And if you don't know a scripture, go run and get a Bible. Just read a scripture. But you can just say it now. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I accept you. I want you to come into my life. Lord, because I got things going on, I don't even know how to handle it. I don't, I don't, <laughs> let alone work it. I don't know how to handle it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to believe in. That's because you're not in the word of God. But you know what? There's always a, a, a day that you can start, a moment that you can start. Time yourself. You, you might not want to uh, get into the Bible, but for 15 minutes, then get in the Bible for 15 minutes and read the books of Psalm. Read the book of Proverbs. Those are uh, verses that will tell you how to handle because it says, first of all, don't um, uh, put your uh, confidence in man. And so you got to believe God, not man. Man, okay, you want me to go there. Y'all want me to go there. Man will twist you around and around, and you won't know how to get out of that knot. So listen to this. God has some great, glorious, marvelous, wonderful things prepared for you that were being blocked. See, there's a lot of things you that, that are being blocked in your life because you're not depending on God. God is the, if you don't go to nobody else, Go to God. And then it said, uh, and, and, and it, this is a little story. And it said, one day while this person was praying and studying, the Holy Spirit began to give him a vision of the possibilities of things God wanted to do in their life. Well, God did that to me. He, 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 he I read the Bible and read the Bible, I was reading the Bible, and certain things I'd come to. I would like feel like I'm gonna up chuck because I my brain was telling me no I ain't gonna be no teacher in the, in nobody's church I'm not gonna be no preacher in somebody's church I no I'm not, no 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 I'm, I don't want to do any of that and I just kept on kept on reading the Bible and every time I got to certain things and certain words I would feel like I'm gonna up chuck but I didn't know that. Uh, I had all these mountains and I needed to get rid of them for me to do what God wanted me to do. I had to get rid of them. So I learned, I learned that I needed to, it said, like I said, I needed to get God into my life. And, and then he said, but there were, okay, there were mountains between God's best blessings and me. And he said, if you knew what was on the other side, check it, check this out. If you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would, you would move it. You would move it. You'd get rid of it. You would get rid of it because it's not good for you. And I mean, a lot of things are going on. I, I, look, and I'm going to break this down. It could be a man. It could be a woman. It could be your kids. Could be your friend, but everything ain't good. Okay, so it says mountains were hindering or blocking the blessings of God in my life, and they were. I had, I mean, let's put it this way. Um, <laughs> let's put it this way. Um, I was doing things that I knew I didn't have no business doing, and I didn't want to get rid of them, and so I, I just let God keep talking to me. And he kept telling me mountains were hindering or blocking my blessings. And so 
to motivate me to use my faith because I was saved. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was saved. Oh, Jesus, but I had some things going on. Hey, I know y'all out there listening. I had things going on that I did not want to give up. Okay, so let's get back. And it said, to motivate me to use my faith, the Holy Spirit, which now, you know, is my helper, my comforter, and, 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 and my God, my God, my God. My God is my rock. But it says here, to motivate me to use my faith, the Holy Spirit said again and again, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. So as I looked at Mark, you know, I, I love Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I love it. Over and over, I began to get uh, a clear understanding of what Jesus was saying to me because I didn't know I didn't want to do it. OK, and I and I'm stubborn. I didn't want to do it. Um, I, and then I didn't think I was intelligent enough. I didn't think I could speak uh, the word of God like a lot of people do. I really didn't. I, uh, and I, I knew that if I got somewhere and was going to preach this word, I would start probably, OK, I'm going to put it like this, slobbering all of myself and stuttering. OK, so stop laughing. But I was just determined not to do the will of God. I was. And so it says, for verily, I say unto you, this is this is Mark eleven twenty three. 23. I, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you. For verily, I say unto you. That whosoever. Shall say unto this mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. You got you gonna you're gonna end up believing that those things which be said it shall come to back to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he said it. And the Lord said, I got another one. Uh turn to Luke 17:6. Because God said, speak to those mountains, be thy removed. And whatever mountains you're going through, if a man is beating on you, you speak to those mountains, you call on Jesus. Okay, I was moving fast on that one, wasn't I? I was really moving fast because you don't, you ain't got all day to be getting them hits in your face. Okay, so quickly you just say, Jesus, remove this. Jesus, I curse it to the root. Jesus, I, 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 I can't take it no more. So I put this under my feet and you step on the devil's head. That's what you do. You step on the devil's head at, or neck, choke him. Tell him to get back where he belongs. You can't take all them licks and God don't want you to because Jesus and died on that cross 2000 years ago to take care of you. And all you got to say is this is not of God. And then you say, Jesus, I need help. I need help. And see, that's one thing people don't want to do. People don't want to call on Jesus. Okay, you know me, I'm getting ready to say it. Don't be stupid. Okay, you, you don't need all them licks. You don't need somebody verbally abusing you. God called you a queen or a king. You a king and a queen. Come on now. You are his children. And he didn't put nobody in your presence to beat on you and to curse you out and to misuse you and abuse you. He didn't do that. No, that's Satan. That's Satan. Because Satan is trying. He don't want you to get saved. He's trying to take all your eggs away from you. Come on. Stop playing. I'm serious. Come on. I See, I can laugh now. I can smile now. I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm telling you, okay, we're going to go to Luke 17, 6. And the Lord, see, I like, look, and the Lord said, hey, 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 and the Lord said, if you have faith, check it out, check it out. And I know y'all didn't heard this. Y'all didn't heard this. As a grain, a, a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamore tree, be that plucked up by the root. See, when, 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 when things are going on in your life, 
You say, I bind that in the name of Jesus and I curse, check me out, check me out. I curse it to the root. I curse it to the root. You got to get to the root. You got to dry that sucker up. You got to kill it. Curse it to the root. Anybody that's going through anything that you know ain't of God, curse it to the root. Go in the bathroom and start to say, and I curse it to the root. God, I curse it to the root. And if you're not saved, tell God to come into your life. Lord, just come into my life. I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. And oh my God, his hands will open up so quickly and he'll grab you and hug you and, and nourish you and, 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 and get you in the, in the spot that you're supposed to be in. But you got to call on him. Because one thing about God, oh, about my God, he's not going to force you to do anything. If nothing else, he gonna tell that devil, get your hands off of her. But see, he gonna, all he gonna do is just take a little finger and he gonna thump him. Okay, 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 I know y'all cracking. Okay, but he gonna thump him back where he belongs. Cause see, first of all, the devil is a defeated foe. Don't y'all know that? He's a defeated foe. He already been defeated. You just got to know and believe that he's de he's a defeated foe. And then you, what you got to do, you take, see, people listen to their little ear, their, their cell phones. Put your Bible on your cell phone. Oh, I had to, I, yeah, I had to shut down on that one. Because I, 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 I hear y'all talking about the Bible. Well, you're going through, you need God, and he's, he, you can read about him in the Bible. And get an audible Bible on your cell phone. You hear everything else, now let's hear something that's going to work with you. Going to handle it. Going to take care of it. That's going to give you abundance and prosperity, love and peace and joy, meekness and kindness, faithfulness, and self-control. Because, see, you got to have self-control to stop doing certain things when God is telling you. Don't, don't, don't fault God. Don't fault God. All he wants you to do is have love and peace and joy. He wants you to have prosperity. Hey, I'm dancing now, really. Hey. Because, see, I know, I, knew, I know all about it. I know. And, oh, wait a minute now. I know I, some things I, I, I do and know I know better. And I have to shake it off and turn around and 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 tell the devil you're a lie. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not. I'm not going to say that. I have to practice that stuff. I have to practice. But as I was saying, he said, I, I "Had the faith of a mustard seed," and and it said in this scripture, the illustration is a sycamore tree. I like this. Someone once joked and he said, I have identified my problem and I am sick of my. Sometimes things will stay around until you get, oh, check it out. And we say this every day. We say this. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm, Y'all know that's good. And you, you're determined that you, oh, wow, determined that those things are going to be changed in your life. So here's Jesus using the illustration of a tree. And because moving a tree requires dealing with roots, hey, we're back at the roots, curse it to the root, that have been there for a long time. The tree and its roots could represent a variety of problems in your life. Well, they are. They are. You, you, you sitting up there and and, and you got your children, and you, 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 the man ain't there no more. And okay, come up with a plan. Get a plan. Uh, you know, I see it on TV all the time how little kids are out there in their yard and they're selling popcorn and lemonade and stuff. This is in the summer because you know it's winter now. And you know, we can't go out there now because of the pandemic. 
but um, uh, things that we can do uh, to help your mind register to say, I don't have to live like this. I, I don't have to uh, uh, run around and do this. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. And, and it says here, listen to this. Um, it says here, Jesus uses the illustration of a tree. And moving a tree requires dealing with roots that have been there a long time. Trees, the tree and its roots could represent a variety of problems. I said what, oh, and uh, Smith Wiggleworth, y'all need to get to his books. Smith Wiggleworth. Oh, he is bad. He's gone, but oh my God. He... Okay. Get it together, Donna. Smith Wiggles for, for Worth said in the book, ever increasing faith. Any man may be changed by faith, no matter how he may be feathered. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, you can see that Jesus said this kind of faith will work for whosoever. And it will work on whatsoever. So whatever's going on in your life, Jesus will work with you. In other words, this work for anyone on anything. And let me tell you this. Um, <laughs> the word works. If you work it. And that's one thing I'm going to say for the rest of my life. The word works if you work it. So it says here, notice exactly the way that Jesus stated this in Luke 17, 6. Say unto this sycamore tree, be thy plucked up by the root and be thy planted in the sea and it shall obey you. Jesus did not say it would obey your favorite anoint, anointed <laughs> preacher. It will obey you. He did not even say that it would obey God. Jesus said it would obey you. And when you put this with Mark eleven twenty two, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, he shall have whatsoever he said it. You can see the power of faith filled words. You can see that it is not up to God. Check this out. It's not up to God for someone else to deal with the situation. Your mountain. It's your mountain. Okay. Okay. Slow down, Don. Your mountain will obey you. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. And a lot of people want people, okay, to pray for them. They ain't nothing wrong with that. But then they want them to get the scriptures and they want them to uh, get that devil and curse that devil. No, 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 no. That's your problem. You, you the one that's got to say it. I can say it all day long, but see, that enemy ain't on me. It's on you. So you got to tell that enemy to dry up. Oh, that is so good. Your mountain will obey you. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Jesus did not say to talk to God about the problem. He told you to speak to the problem yourself. And that's the thing. People want everybody to speak to the problem for them. No, you you curse that to the root. You tell that mountain to get off when you get out your home. You, you know what? When people tell me they can't sleep at night and Jesus and 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 oh okay, I stuttered, I stuttered, I stuttered. Stop, Donna. Um, but God said to speak to that mountain. Tell that devil, you woke, you are up sitting and, and you can't go to sleep. And you now, now it's time for you to get up and go to work. And you so tired because you didn't get no sleep. Who told you to stay up? You stayed up on your own because Jesus said he don't never sleep nor slumber. 
So he's up. What are you doing up? What is you doing up? You need to rise up when you can't go to sleep and, and when you're feeling all weary and eerie and okay, I, I could, you know, say a lot, but I'm going to be good. I'm going to keep this good. Okay. Hey, but you look up in your room, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, and you tell that devil, get out of my home right now in, come on now, let's work this thing, in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's times when I done woke up and I done sat up and I'm like, why am I up? And I said, oh, it's you. Get out of my house. I ain't, I ain't scared. I got to get him out of my house so I can go to sleep, so I can go to work. Okay, I know all of y'all go cracking. But I'm I'm helping you. I'm helping you tell you to speak to that devil. The devil don't have no rights. He's a defeated foe. You, you, look, take your foot and kick it. And tell him, get out of my house. Get off my children. People got children that's out there in the street shooting folks, killing folks. And all you got to say, devil, get your hands off of my kids. Get your hand off of my, my, my daughter. Get your hands off of their jobs. Get your hands off of uh, my neighbor. Come on. I'm, te I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. How? how to handle the devil. You don't have no food. That's, that ain't of God. Lord, I need food today. I need to feed my children. And he, he look, he used me. I was supposed to have been going to church and I, I heard God tell me to take a bag of uh, food to somebody. He didn't give me no name. And I said, okay, but I went to church. When I got home, God said, didn't I tell you to take somebody some food? I told my husband, and girl, we, my, <clears throat> I got choked on. Because, I mean, I, I told my husband and I said, oh, I didn't take that food to wherever God wanted me to take it. And we were running around the house, putting food in bags. And <clears throat> and I got in the car. My husband didn't even go with me. Okay, duh. <laughs> But I let that car drive. I knew I was in the spirit. I was in the spirit. And I knew, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. I knew he had sent me somewhere, but I didn't know where he wanted me to go. So the car drove itself because I was in the spirit, okay? And I went and I knocked on this door because God said, stop here, stop here. And I stopped and I went, knocked on the door. You know, I'm, I'm thinking now, okay, hey, they might have dogs and cats and, and I, I don't really want to go up to this door. But I, I know if God wanted me to go somewhere, he knew I didn't like uh, cats and dogs. So I, I knocked on the door and the lady came to the door. And, and, and she said, yes. I said, God sent me here to bring food. and uh, took the food, you know, I was young then, I could carry it in bags, okay? But God let me see in the spirit that, oh my goodness, that she was boiling water. And I mean, I cried, I cried because she was waiting on me to bring the food. And she was stirring water, boiling it, getting it ready. See, she was preparing because she knew God had sent somebody to her. Whew. Wow. Yeah. And that that's what that's what makes me be obedient to God and uh read his word. Oh yeah, there's times when I haven't read his word, maybe say for a week. Um, but he can't use us unless we let him and he can't use us if we're not being obedient. Whew. I get this off of me. Okay. But, um, he's just that good. 
and, and he said that he will use a rock. I'd rather him use me than a rock, okay? But he will. When we we get to the point where we we uh, are Mr. and Mrs. Know it all. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. But I'm gonna get back to this because that was just good to me. So I'm telling you, your mountain will obey you. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. Jesus did not say to talk to God. He told you to speak to the problem yourself. After all, it is your mountain or tree or problem, and it is in the way of supernatural increase. Wow. Super natural increase. And I always say, in fact, it was my daughter that spoke one day in, uh, in church and she said, mm, I want God to put his super with my natural. And I'm telling we we ran with that. We ran with that because I mean, I, oh, we, God put your super with my natural. And then now he's saying that um, it is your mountain, your tree, or your problem, and it is a it, it it your problem is in the way of supernatural increase and blessings in your life. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. You can't tell me, <laughs> check it out. You can't tell me that that's not good. It's super, your problems are in the way of your supernatural increase and blessings in your life. Whew. Okay, somebody, I know somebody's screaming. I know somebody's screaming. But I look, I got this. This is in a book that I'm reading. But I want you to hear because you don't have this book. <clears throat> oh, my God. Your mountain needs, again, to hear your voice. You may be waiting on God, but God is really, and my husband says this all the time. He says, I'm waiting on God and God is waiting on me. Now you can't tell me that wasn't good. Stop playing. You can't tell me that wasn't good. You waiting on God and God is waiting on you. Mm. <clears throat> I got to do that again. You may be waiting on God, but God is really waiting on you. Often we miss it when we don't examine the scriptures closely enough. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. I keep, I'm going to keep saying that. It's, it's in the book. That's why I keep saying it. <clears throat> I got this book, and, and th this is a magnificent book. Yeah, I, I got to tell you about this book, Spirit of Faith, Mark Hankins, Spirit of Faith, Mark Hankins. You may be waiting on God, but God is really waiting on you. Often we miss it when we don't examine the scriptures close enough. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. There it is again. I know you're tired of hearing that, but that's what it says. The mountains need to hear your voice. Oh my goodness. And you can make it personal right now and say, my mountain needs to hear my voice. Say it, don't get scared. My mountain needs to hear my voice. Oh, look, guess what? And when I'm saying it, you, you won't believe how God will put things that you can see in the spirit that we need to get rid of. I know there's things I need to do. I need to stop. I need to stop saying, I need to stop focusing on it. Hey, come on now. I, I know that, I, I know this. Often, again, often we miss it when we don't examine the scriptures closely enough. Your mountain needs to hear your voice. You can make it personal right now. Again, my mountain needs to hear my voice. Your voice is an address in the spirit. What is there about your voice 
that is so important. Why did Jesus say we shall have whatsoever? He said it. First, there is no no <clears throat> no other voice like your voice. Your voice is your address in the realm of the spirit. Scientists tell us that the voice print is just as accurate in determining in individuals identity as their fingerprints. They say there is no other voice <clears throat> like your voice. In certain high security situations, a person a person must speak and his voice must be recognized before clearance is given. And in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him, even into his ear. See, he hears you. Oh, he hears you. Come on now. I don't care how far away you are. He hears you. And he says, God, he heard my voice out of his temple and my, my cry. You know, we sang that song uh, in church. My cry came before him, even into his ears. And then the earth shook and trembled. And the foundation of hills moved. Psalms 18, 6 and 7. Psalms 18, 6 and 7. And I'm telling you, this is just how good God is. I'm, I mean, your mountains needs to hear your voice. And you're not saying anything. You're not calling on God. Oh, check this out. It doesn't take long for your voice to reach heaven. And, and a lot of people, by them not knowing God, they think it's God don't hear me. God don't care about me. Why would Jesus take on 39 stri stripes and not care for you? They ripped his skin. You know what a rake looks like? That's what that looked like when they was ripping his skin. They, it's like they took a rake and pulled his skin apart. Now you think he, gonna, uh, he don't love you? Come on now. It doesn't take long for your voice to reach heaven and enter the ears of the almighty God. He is the source of your authority as a believer. Heaven responds to your voice. If your voice moves heaven, check. <laughs> yeah, okay. If your voice, oh my goodness. If your voice moves heaven, you know it, it will move a mountain and trees. This is a way to have a chance, a change of scenery in your life. You must lift up your voice. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm get, trying to get you on the right track. You must lift up your voice with the voice of faith that believes. Are you a believer? You have to believe. And now I'm, I'm telling you, your voice hmm, is the highway that angels travel on. And you, woo, I'm telling you, I, I read this in this book and I'm telling you, I was like, really? My voice, oh my God, my voice, oh wow, is the highway that angels travel on angels travel on. You tell me this ain't a good book. This is a good book. Wow. And and and, and then it says mm. you must lift up your voice with the voice of faith that believes, expects and will not be denied. The majority of Christians are weak. It says the majority of Christians are weak. 
though they are uh, earnest, is because they have never dared to make a confession of who they are, who they are in Christ. A lot of people don't, oh, a lot of people don't uh, admit that they're Christians. They can work with you for 20 years and you didn't know they was a Christian because they don't want anybody to know they're Christian. Well, I be telling everybody, you, well, you know me, my mouth, I, I ain't screwing nobody. I ain't, I'm not the only person I'm, and I'm not scared of Jesus. I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying, that it, it ministers to him. He hears it and that it sounds good to his ears, ears it's, and it smells good to his nostrils. I don't want to upset him. I don't want him to be uh, upset and, and, but he's still going to love me no matter what. He's never going to not keep on loving me, but it says here, the reason the majority of Christians are 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 the weak though they are earnest because they had never dared to make a, a confession of who they are in Christ. Not only does God respond to the voice of faith, but angels are also activated by your words. An angel told Daniel, now y'all know the Bible, okay? Some of y'all know the Bible. The angels, okay, told Daniel. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy word. Ah, wow, yeah, yeah. And Daniel in 10, 10, um, Daniel 10, 12, Daniel's words brought the answer from heaven, and the angels came to exactly the right address. You need the angels to come to your address? Get in the word of God. Get in the word of God. They got this book called Glory, that word ladder in the Old Testament when Jacob saw angels ascending and descending in Genesis 28, 12. Come on, come on, come on. Has the same numeral value as the word. It's a, it was a voice. Voice. Is it possible that angels travel on your voice ladder? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. And this is just a good story, you guys. It it, it helps us move about. The word of God, you know, I, and I know people, they, people say, Donna, how do you stay so happy? Oh, I got my moments. Come on now. I got my moments. But I, I can't, you know, my my husband's, I don't know how to hold a grudge. And you ask my friends. No, ask Jesus. You know, I don't know how to hold a grudge. I don't. Because that 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 makes me weak. I get, you know, I, I get irritable or something. I don't know. That that feeling is not nice. I don't like that feeling of being mad at somebody. I don't like it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I think that I probably have been mad at somebody. I never really worked on being mad at somebody, but I do know one person that I was mad at. But I didn't hold the grudge. And so I, I'm just saying that I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know nothing about holding a grudge. And it's not nice to hold a grudge. And things happened to me that I could easily have uh, held a grudge years and years and years. But I forgave that person. Um, I did. And, and I never looked back. I don't look back. I, I don't look back. And if I look back, I might need to shake it off and get rid of it, okay, if I look back. But I'm not looking back to remember things that happened to me. I don't talk about things that happened to me because God forgave them and me. And I remember at one time somebody said, um, shut your eyes and forgive whoever. 
Well, you know, a lot of people ain't shutting their eyes to forgive nobody because they want to stay mad because they ain't got nothing else to do. Okay? They ain't got nothing to do but to be mad at somebody and want to fight somebody. They don't have Jesus. Then they, they, they want to see somebody hurt. They want to see somebody crying. That's all they got to do. That, that, that's their friend. The devil is their friend. I don't want to look back. I don't want to remember all that mess that I went through. I don't want to look back. I, I just want to know now that I was given, I forgave them. And thank you, Jesus. I, I am the happiest person on earth. Okay, I am the happiest person. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, sometimes I get down and I, you know, but it don't last long. It don't last long. I don't want it to last long. Listen to me. I don't want it to last long. If they did something to me, I, I will. I will go to them and say, I am so sorry. I didn't mean it like that. And and then, well, I might have, and then I, sometimes I turn around and, well, I don't know. I said it, but okay, okay, but forgive me forgive me. And I forgive myself. And I tell myself all the time, I forgive myself. I'm not going on no guilt trip. I tell the devil, I'm not going on no guilt trip. You ain't going to bring that back to me. I'm not, I'm not getting on no guilt trip. I'm not letting the devil use me. And when you go on a guilt trip, you letting the devil use you. You can't forgive. Okay. Well then go on through that mud. Go on. But I'm going to forgive so I can walk on solid ground. So I want my new boots to get muddy. Okay, okay. I don't know where that came from. But I want my boots but muddy. And I don't want no blood on my boots. Amen to the man. Listen to this. The word spoken to you must be spoken through you. Okay. God calls things which be not as though they were. God calls things. God calls things. Abraham had to agree with God before the miracle, before the miracle could come to pass. The word spoken to you must be spoken through you, through you. See, that's why I'm telling y'all, get your Bible, read the Bible and read it out loud or get it and put it in your ear and listen. He would, that will change your life. I mean, your, my life has been changed. I, people, you know, people love on me, not because of me, but because of what's in me. It's Jesus on the inside of me. I, I represent God. I just, I want to talk about the word all the time. And there's some things I don't know in the word. So I ain't going to tell no lying. I'm not no scholar. But when I do read what I read, I want to take it and use it the way that I understand. And that's one thing about the word. God will say something to me in a scripture and it'll be totally different to you when you read it. It don't mean the same thing for you. that it, and, and for me, that word, it, it does miracles. I can read something like this. The word spoken to, to you must be spoken through you. Okay, God calls those things which be not as though they were. And, and, and it says, and when, when you, God calls those things to be not as though they were. Okay, you might read that and, and come up with something else. He, he's piercing your heart. He's piercing you to give you some understanding so you can make a change or so you can understand something. Because we always say, why, why, why? Well, he's going to tell you why. He's going to tell you what you're doing to cause it. Then he's going to tell you how to solve it. That's how good he is. Got me twisted. Okay, see, I, I have a good time. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm older than normal, okay? But I remember a time I would dance, dance, dance. And I, I prayed to this day. At 71, Lord, let my legs work so I can praise you. I can honor you. I can bless you. Let my legs work, Father God. Let my legs work so I can kick my legs out. I can jump on up and down, Lord, and give you the praise because I honor no other God but you. Whoa, whoa. that went through my, my spirit. Okay, okay. God is looking for someone to believe him and say the same thing. He wants us to say his word. 
not somebody else's word. This is the word. This is something that somebody wrote. This is, but he got these scriptures in here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations and before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. Woo, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Oh, now faith is a substance of things hoped for. Huh, evidence of things not seen. Now faith is a sub, sub assurance, the confirmation, the title deed, <laughs> the title deed of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith receives as real faith mm -mm, facts what is not revealed to the scenes, senses. Excuse me. Mm. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And, and I want to read these before my time is up. I got a, about 10 minutes, I think. But there are five samples, conclusions from Mark eleven twenty three. And it says, one of them, if it were God's will for the mountain to be there, Jesus would not have told you to move it. Wow. If you only knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. Remember that part in the book? You would move it. Three, if it, if, okay, hold up. If it is there, you can move it. There is no mountain in the sphere of your life that you cannot move. Hey, you can, you can move it. Tell it to be gone. Tell it, be gone in Jesus' name. When you can't sleep and you're irritable, tell that devil, get out your home. Get your, get out of my house. Get out of my room. Get off my children. I'm telling you, you can move it. If it is there, you can move it. There is no mountain in this, in the sphere of your life that you cannot move. Number four, your mountain needs to hear your vo voice. Number five. If what you have in if what you have in life is all up to God, Jesus never would have said Mark eleven twenty three. Oh my God, Mark eleven twenty three. Read Mark eleven twenty three. I know you guys want me to read Mark eleven twenty three, but I've been reading it all ever since I've been on here. So now you go to your Bible and you read Mark eleven twenty three. Ooh, that wasn't that good. That's five points here. If there is a mountain in your way, quake it, quark it, quark it. It would obey. It will obey you. God is holding you responsible to frame your world. Mm -mm. Did y'all read? Did y'all hear that? God is holding you responsible mm. to frame your world with his word. The devil would like to frame your world with doubt, fear, depression, sickness, poverty, but the word of God will put him on the run. Now you tell me that wasn't good. The word of God puts the devil on the run. Amen. 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 
Jesus told you to speak to the mountain. The mountain has been speaking to you, telling you how big he is. See, the devil is the mountain. And he's telling you how big your mountain is. Ain't that a shame? How long? Okay. How long it is? Has it been there? How long has that mountain been there? Too long. And I want to get this here. It says some people have actually gotten into denial about the mountain uh, or the obstacles in their life. They say uh, there is no mountain. There is no mountain. But they are just holding their eyes and pretending they're mountain is not there and there's a lot of people going through lots of people going through and 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 they don't realize these are mountains they don't realize it's satan you can't see satan but you know he's around when you don't have no food when you don't have a uh, 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 money to 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 get gas in your car uh money to pay your rent you that's satan because god prepares you to have these things People, yes, right now, today, people are going through, but they need to call on Jesus. Thousands and thousands and thousands of boxes are going to the hungry. But if the people would just say, Jesus, he'll fix it. He'll show you how to fix it. He'll tell you where to go. He'll send you somewhere. But just listen to Jesus. Cork it. Q U A R K. Tell the devil to get off of you. Get away from you. The mountain's been speaking to you, telling you how big it is, how long it has been there. See, he'll talk to you uh, that it is impossible to move. Some people have actually gotten into denial about the mountain or the obstacles in their lives. They say there is no mountain, but they are just holding their eyes, pretending the mountain is not there. Don't go get into denials. Denial, (laughs) denial, D-E-N-I-L-E, is a river in Egypt. Jesus said for you to speak to the mountain not be in denial it exists in <clears throat> deny okay dial up the mountain dial 1-800 mountain for most people is a local call oh that is so cool it's a local call because they 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 serve the devil Mm-mm-mm. Talk to your mountain directly and tell it to be removed and cast it into, t- I, ca- I, I, I tell you, and I cast these problems, these mountains into the, oh, listen, into the, into the sea, into the sea. Now, don't go take a, a fishing pole and, 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 and pull it back out. Cast it in the sea and leave it there. It would be as though it had never been there. Court, cork it. Wow. 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 You don't have to go through all that. You, you, you don't have to let the devil run your life. Get, get with people that we all can come together and, <clears throat> and pray. Pray for one another. I'm not going to take on your problem and I'm not going to cast it into the sea. You do that. As we said, let, 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 let your voice be known. Let the devil hear your voice. Amen. Because it's almost like calling a number and, and they, uh, they think you Mary and you Judy. Cause that, ain't, that, that wasn't, um, Mary's voice. Amen. The devil needs to hear, the the word of God needs to hear 
your voice. You need to speak the word. And I'm telling you, you will be so grateful and so thankful. And you don't have to tell everybody your business. You, you build yourself up first. Get yourself together first. Speak to you. Look in the mirror and see you. See you. Talk to you. See, I talk to myself. I look in the mirror. Y'all know what I'm going to say. And I look in the mirror and I see beauty. I look in the mirror and I say, ooh, I love me some me. Okay? See, Satan don't like that. You don't want me to love on myself. I love on myself. That's how come when things go on, go, go wrong, I curse it to the root. Cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Because see, Jesus is not, once I cast it into the sea of, of forgetfulness, <clears throat> wow. Jesus don't know it no more. I, I'm not supposed to go back and pull that back. I don't want it. And Jesus ain't going to bring it back to you. He ain't going to bring that mess back to you. He mad because we ain't stomped it out earlier. A to the man. He's upset that we didn't get this taken care of. So, again, I thank God that you're listening and I pray for each man, woman, born girl that you heard this and yes, I this ministered to me, so I wanted to pass it on. I don't care who wrote it. The scriptures are God's. And I was reading scriptures. And I'm telling you, I do speak to those mountains. In fact, Mark 11, 22, it says, have faith in God for me to speak to those mountains. Because that's the next verse. I speak to anything that is not like God. I curse it to the root. Yes. And so I'm so grateful that you got to hear this. I'm so grateful that you're going to work this. Because if if this is going to be where you can hear it again, uh, go for it. Go for it. But again, I thank God for Up TV, UPTV. Channel six. And I thank God because he said, Be you say bye to anything that ain't like God. If it ain't like God, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Now, we're not forcing you to get rid of it. It's on your time. But stop saying it. Oh, I have a pet peeve thing about people cursing in front of babies, cursing period, but in front of little bitty kids. So I, you know, when I hear it, I just curse it to the root. Lord, cleanse their mouth. But then see, they still got to go back and say, okay, I need to stop cursing. I'm telling you how good God is. He's so good that can't nobody comprehend how good he is. Just fall in love with him. That's all I'm going to say. Amen. Again, I'm Donna Jones. And this is Be You Say Bye. And I'm getting ready to say bye to you, 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 and you. And ask Jesus to come into your life. All you got to do is say, Lord, come into my life. Just that simple. Just that simple. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I am having fun. And I'll talk to you next Saturday. God bless. God bless a thousandfold.